Welcome back. It is Sunday morning. My red oxide Bonder primer has gone off overnight and that repair looks really nice. So I will continue with this area. Um, plan is to go and get another old sill. And I picked one up recently for a tenner, which was a bargain. It did involve having to drive all the way up to, where was it? somewhere a long way away on a Saturday, which was really oh, kind of regrettable, but 10 quid for a whole original sill isn't bad <coughs> at all. So you can still buy them brand new, 100 quid. Uh, but anyway, right, I'll go and find that, work out how much I'm cutting off. I might also try, because um, I'm cutting this sill open a bit more, because I found a bit of rust down here, I'm gonna mark it up neatly, cut it, but I might try and reach in and push some of this dent down and out, because it's pulled up, sorry, up here, pulled up, and it's pulled that seal lip around, <clears throat> which is annoying, because I want it nice and straight. I've made efforts to make this bit straight, so when you lie under the car, it's all straight and narrow, till it gets to there like it should be. So I might try and massage that down and push that bit back in, because uh, if I leave that to the body shop, it's gonna be quite difficult for them to do uh, without putting lots of work in. So <clears throat> cut that open, push that bit down if I can, and then chop up my new sill. Just cut a bit more of the sill off from here. You can see what was happening. So I've cut it right back to good metal. In there, you can see there's, or I can see, there's, oh, come on. still see cavity wax and good metal so that's a good result i'm now also closer to my dent i was trying to feed the handle of my trolley jack in there to sort of push it down couldn't do that had to look inside and i do have an inspection hole here which it's literally right on the top side of the bent metal. So I'm going to put a rod through from here and then just beat it down. It doesn't need to look pretty. It just needs to be hit hard enough. So you see that bit where... Oh, the Spitfire. <coughs> Spitfire. I don't know why. I always get a buzz when I hear that noise and the guy flies around. He actually does loops and stuff sometimes. Well, not whole loops, but crazy bank turns. Right, so where were we? Yeah, if you look along here, you can see the belly of the sill. Then where we've got the dent, it kicks out. So even if you gobbed that dent full of filler, because it, it has pushed the metal out up here, it wouldn't work. So. Um, although this doesn't need to be neat, I need to wallop it down so that that belly gets pulled in. I don't care if this stays lumpy and messy. I'll ask Mike and Dave at the body shop if they can um, dress it with filler or they'll have one of them spot world pulling tools. Um, but I want most of that done now so that I can just get the big ugly stuff done in the way. What I don't want to do is weld this bit in here and then find that it's so stiff then that when you try and push this down, it doesn't want to move. So uh, yeah, gonna go find a bar, put it through that hole, hit it a few times and see what progress we make. Been going at this for a while now. We are by no means finished, but we are definitely making progress. So here is a, I, I should, probably should have shown this earlier. Uh, it's a straight edge and it comes down. It, it goes in there now. See where number nine is. Got a, sh got a gap. Still a bit proud here, but most of it is pretty good. It now it looks like that. So you can see got this area to work out and that bit. That bit is where the original crease is, whatever it was with the tines of that fucking forklift truck the guy moved it around with or something else i don't know but most of it's there you just need to 
keep working, but that horrible belly is gone. What I did was, um, that's the bar I bought for doing the gearbox on the gold one at the NEC Classing and Restoration Show last year. Then I've got my bendy screwdriver. I had this old broken lever bar. And then my nylon hammer. This is like a shock hammer, so it rattles. So um, it's dead blow two pound dead blow hammer so i've been working that along here so as well as pushing that bit down i've been pushing this bit in which has helped push that bit out so a little bit more to do and then we should be about there we are about as done as i'm gonna do it the rest will have to be done with filler basically we have a nice flowing line it's a little bit low in here but i just can't get there to the to the bulgy bit down there which is now ever so slightly high but that doesn't matter down here a bit of a ripple but it's all it can be filled now without too much effort <coughs> so that's good right now i can return my attention to the sill here we have brand new Old sock Austin Rover seal. So, we're going to do some measuring and then cut that bit off and weld it in. All right, take the pen out of my mouth so I can talk. Uh, I've done my first rough cut of the sill section out there, chopped the bit off that I need, roughly measured. I trimmed a bit more off there so it was straighter so i'll get a nicer line now i'm just oh yeah i nipped a bit of my weld off up there because this uh sill has to sit flat on there and comes down to here and now it's just a case of trimming and sanding until i get what i want and what i want is those lines there to join perfectly the belly of the sill, you know, the bit I just massaged back there to line up. Not too worried about what's under the front wing. That's my kind of bodge area because it all gets hidden. But the, those lines need to be cock on perfect. The bottom line of the sill needs to be perfect and the actual profile needs to be perfect. The other thing that needs to be perfect is some people would butt weld this as in they would just join the two panels together and run a seam of weld along and grind it smooth. Problem with that is if you didn't get decent penetration and you can't guarantee it always, um, you, when you sand it smooth, you might have chuffle metal actually connecting it. So what I'm gonna do is sand all this down till it fits and I have about one mil gap all the way around. Then I'm gonna weld tabs to the back of this um, can I do it just to the back of that panel? I think I can. Yeah, so I'll, I'll weld a fillet of steel along there and along here. I probably won't bother doing it there because that bit um, is joined with the wing over the top as well to add strength. But yeah, it basically means I can weld into the gap without blowing a big hole, without blowing a big hole into the cabin. Um, and when I linish it smooth, I know I've got good penetration. If I'm going back to a smooth surface, I know there's at least one and a half, one mil of metal in the, the, the gap I left. So that's the plan. I'm just gonna get on with it. There's my newly trimmed piece of metal, taking most of the paint off where I wanna weld it. And also on the inside where there was some flash rust. So I'm gonna paint that in high J80 while I go and cut my little strips. And then when the Hydro 80's got on, I can weld it, go and have a cup of tea, paint and bonder primer, leave it out in the sun, and hopefully <coughs> weld it in shortly after that. Slight change plan. I decided to tack those on now because I still need to drill the holes for the plug welds to go onto the bottom edge of the sill. Basically, you can see it's just a little strip of one mil steel tack welded on and now this I can't put a bit on in there otherwise I can't fit the thing in the sill but basically that sits up inside he says 
like so. Then I can clamp it with mold grips and magnets. I've got a nice gap that I can weld into, picking up on that one mil steel behind and get a real nice solid weld without blowing holes and generally screwing it up. So last things to do are to put the plug weld holes along the bottom of this. It should be plug welded or spot welded along that front seam to the inner wing. But there's no point because uh, nothing sits on top of it. It's all totally hidden. So I'm not going to bother. I'm just going to run little stitches like a Reyes curve. And then we can weld it on later. So I'm going to drill my plug wood holds, paint it, leave it to dry. My bit of metal is drying over there with the Bonder primer. I've just put hollow more hydrate 80 in there and as far down the seal as I can get it. That's the rust killer, which you can then paint over. Can't weld for it though, so um, once that's dried, once that's dried, I'll offer this up. I'll mark where the spot weld goes and I'll go through again with the spot weld drill or a drill bit just to scuff up the paint so I get a nice good weld into there. Um, not a lot else to report. I'm going to go for a cup of tea. I'm back from my cup of tea and extended lunch break because I fell asleep watching the snooker. So it's a bit later than I'd intended, but I was tired. So it doesn't look like I'm going to be getting the wing on today. But what we'll do is put that up in, in, weld that in, and then I should have a really nice, fun job of putting the wing on next time. So um, clamps, drill, and welder. I'm about ready to weld. The line here is really good. It could go forward a touch. Um, it's a bit gappy here, but I don't mind because I can smash that in. I can smash that up and that bit down. Easy. This bit along here is going to be fine because I can reach from the inside through those inspection holes to push it out. But this is the most crucial bit. So I've just got it exactly where I want it there and I'll tack it in a couple of places and then hopefully I can wedge stuff from the inside to pull that out make a nice join and slightly work my way along there welding it still can't find the GoPro I might try and arrange my uh, once I've sorry cleaned up under here first once I've set the welder up I might try and see if I can wedge this iPhone somewhere so you can at least see the beginning of the tacking once again, the plan evolved very slightly. I did end up putting a tiny piece of metal in behind there. You can just see it. That one was tacked to this. So it meant that I could feed it up and in. Uh, whereas if I'd welded it to this piece, it wasn't going to work. Uh, so then I tacked this panel first here to make sure that those lines line up perfectly. One there and one right down in the bottom there. Now I can play trying to push this panel out from the inside and tack it here. And then hopefully uh, we're good to go and just blitz it in there. Well, after all that careful planning, we have an issue. So, oh, shut up with the welder. Right, that bit's lovely. This bit's lovely. That bit's lovely. Up here is lovely. Then we have a problem. And I don't know where the problem lies. We have a baggy bit here. This bit obviously had a wallop and I've addressed it and I don't know what, I'm, what I think has happened is this is, I, I've just put this bit in, pulled it up too high, which is annoying because I might have to take out that tack, take out that tack, push a screwdriver in or something and weld it at the belly down here first. 
um, because I can't lose that. That's original. The length hasn't changed. I doubt the impact of me dressing it could have stretched that. So this is just too short. So I'm going to have to get the saw. Saw that one. How I'm going to do that one, I don't know. A bit of a fail putting it in there. Um, to try and then push this panel out properly to meet that one. Which is a frustration, but never mind. This bit won't change. And hopefully with that one and that one gone, that's all I need. Uh, but it is quite annoying. But, you know, that's the penalty for not having clamped it in enough places to start with. It's my fault. Never mind. Grumpy old man noises. Uh, I've had to break them all out because I just wasn't happy with it. So that tack is still hanging on up there, which is fine. Happy with that one gonna clamp it really solid down here and the first words I'm gonna do is pushing this panel out so that it meets the swell of that sill properly then I'll do the top that is a lot better so what did I do yeah I cut the tacks out moved it down a bit and now it is really nice and smooth all the way around along that top edge as well I don't know if you can see that but basically we have nice sill so uh, what am I going to do I'm going to find my scrubby dready brushy thing Now that that's in and it ain't gonna move, I'll go in and I'll clean all of the bonder primer off out of that seam. It is high in metal content, but it isn't a world through primer and it will spark, fart and react. All of this shite here, that is, I've worked it out now, that I thought I had a problem with my welder. I didn't, it's because I had this massive magnet clamping it and the magnet, that is so strong that, um, the molten MIG wire, or the molten whirlpool, was just going and getting sucked to the magnet. So, learn that today. So, a bit more scrubby, scrubby, cleany, and then weldy, weldy, weldy. Probably about halfway through. Most of it's welding okay. There's a bit up there I'm not particularly happy with. It's gone a bit wobbly just in here. It isn't a big deal because this is obviously, you know, you don't see it really. It's at ground level. Um, but I don't want it to be obvious that it's been done. On this era of SD1, it's body colour to here and then black, and it would have been in textured stone chip like it is now. It wouldn't shouldn't have been that shiny. This has been overcoated, it would have been sort of dark matte black. Uh so basically when it goes to the body shop, I'll say, please can you hide all of my wobbliness and uh slap a load of filler on it and then stone chip it. <laughs> and it should be good but it just won't be you know the, the other side of the car did the whole sill but if you remember that's really involved it you have to that's the sill there you have to unpick from the base of the a pillar or a post whatever you want to call it b post c post it's an art of work um and it makes so much mess i just don't well I, it doesn't need it you know it, it is going to have a localised repair under there in the middle where there's a drain plug which is rotted up there and then the rear end, same as I'm doing the front end, but the middle is actually pretty good. Uh, I'm not going to do that much more videoing, just going to do more welding and then I'll show you the end result. We are done. That has worked out pretty well. We have... Oh, uh, what did I do? Yeah, I just welded it. Uh, plug welds along the bottom, stitch welds 
along the top and then I ran some little stitches down here as well again that would have been plug welded or spot welded along that return to the inner but there's no point because it's not like this is a like concourse restoration all of this is hidden behind the base of the front wing so the only bits you see is that edge there which is why it was so critical to have that perfect that and that you won't even see that bit um that is the drain plug for the sunroof front offside drain channel thing so that will empty into the inner wing so it is important that this is good and also uh there's a drain hole there for the scuttle which runs down inside the a post and drains out through those holes comes out there and then when the wing goes on there's a little hole there to allow the water out so all of that's good i've not uh, i've kept a bit of a gap there so that's good um i'm not going to clean this up for the same reason i didn't clean up the rear arch just don't want to get grindings fair enough i've got some grindings and sparks and stuff but it's not the same as when you are going balls out with a grinder so i would just probably uh, leave that as is for the moment call it a day uh in other news what was i doing yeah i found a piece of copper where is it do, 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 do. So that is actually dotty metal this was the previous owner's homebrew cooling loop which i removed but was still fitted to the car when it got painted triton green but anyway this piece of copper i'm gonna clean up hammer flat and then that will sit under here while i weld down on top of it to prevent blow through but anyway that's for another day it's what three o'clock i've got other stuff to do now so i'll upload this tonight which will be sunday i'm away next weekend and the weekend after so it might be a while so bear with in the interim i might upload a video on the van and the bubble because i haven't done anything on them for ages yeah i, I have worked on them i just never uploaded anything because i've just been you know busy so oh look there's weld in my hair nice right see you next time